Hi everyone, uh, we are the makers of the uh, Animal Rights Show and we're here to introduce you to the originator of rights-based animal rights. He is a philosopher called Tom Reagan. He sadly died in 2017. Uh, we miss him quite a lot, but um, we're hoping that this little video will be an introduction to his work. And if you want to find out more, then you can go to the Animal Rights uh, Show page on Facebook. There's also another Facebook uh, page called Tom Reagan Legendary. So um, here we go. The rights-based approach now forms the core tenet of my advocacy. The language gives me structure and coherence to advocate for the abolition of animal use. When I think of Tom Reagan, I feel sad that he's gone and how a movement has treated him. Yet every time I see one of his talks or read his words, I hear and feel the weight of his words. This gives me hope and, and serves to remind me, remind me that myself and others can bring Tom's work back to life through our advocacy. I just want to read a short quote, which kind of encompasses this and um, is, is, has galvanized me um, whenever I read it. The image of the ballerina as expressive of disciplined passion, long hours of sweat and toil, of loneliness and practice, of doubt and fatigue. Those are the discipline of her craft, but the passion is there too, the fierce drive to excel, to speak through her body, to do it right, to pierce our minds. That is the image of philosophy I would leave with you. Not too cerebral, but disciplined passion. Of the discipline, enough has been seen. As for the passion, these are times, and these not infrequent, when tears come to my eyes, when I see or read or hear of the wretched plight of animals in the hands of humans. Their pain, their suffering, their loneliness, their innocence, their death. Anger, rage, pity, sorrow, disgust. The whole creation groans under the weight of evil we humans visit upon these mute, powerless creatures. It is our hearts, not just our heads, that call for an end to it all, that demand of us that we overcome, for them, the habits and forces behind their systematic oppression. All great movements, it is written, go through three stages, ridicule, discussion, adoption. It is the realization of this third stage, adoption, that requires both our passion and our discipline, our hearts, and our heads. The fate of animals is in our hands. God grant we are equal to the task. I'm going to read one of my favorite quotes from Tom Reagan. The other animals humans eat, use in science, hunt, trap, and exploit in a variety of other ways have a life of their own that is of importance to them apart from their utility to us. They are not only in the world, they are aware of it and also of what happens to them and what happens to them matters to them. And I think this quote reminds us that animals are individuals with unique personalities, uh, desires, memories. I think it's often overlooked by many people uh, thinking that, for example, a pig is just a pig or a chicken is, is just a chicken. And I think this quote really shakes people out of that mindset uh, and helps them recognize that indeed animals, each animal is uh, an individual. And Brad, you started a school talk based off Reagan's work, didn't you? Yeah, so I've only really been introduced to Tom Reagan's work over the past six months or so, um, despite considering myself part of the animal rights movement for at least four years. Um, so it's been really useful to get a, a deeper um, I guess you could say a more true understanding of what that actually means, animal rights. And as Jeremy says, I've, I've implemented that in a school presentation that I've, I've developed over the past few months. Um, so it's including a few quotes from Tom Reagan, uh, really spelling out the differences between uh, what rights animals already have uh, and what rights we wish to grant them. And yeah, I think having a, a clearer understanding of, of what animal rights actually means has really benefited my advocacy and my messaging. Yeah, I mean, for me, I've came across Reagan's work in 2018. So I'd already been an animal advocate for about four years then, but it really articulated to me um, that as animal advocates, we're always learning and learning about Reagan and his rights-based approach was a continuation of that. To, to me, that there's a few key things that his work has brought to me. I think um, the emphasis on objective language, I've always been interested in language, but the rights-based approach has definitely made me think more about how to make that more focused. 
um, specifically talking about the breeding, the killing and rights violations versus animal abuse, cruelty, suffering, and talking about more of the conditions or the way animal use um, is carried out and, and really getting to the, the fundamental wrong, which is the use itself, not, not how it's done. Um, I think another key distinction is that distinction between the moral rights we're all born with and the legal rights that would need to be granted and articulating that we're not looking for the same rights and that we are looking for just that basic fundamental right to be respected and not to be bred, used, displaced, or killed. And the clip I chose, it was hard to pick just one, but it was from his 89 debate opening. And one thing I know when I first started advocating was I would compare different species and even compare um, the level to which they experience life and have interests. And I've started to realize that's a bit of a distraction because I think to build a case for animal rights, all we really need to do is establish that they do have interests and that they do experience life. To the degree they do this, to me, is uh, not the, the fundamental aim of what we want to talk about. Um, and really um, just, just bringing things back to that animal-centric approach versus that human-centric approach. And, and, and also the comparison of um, other animals to humans. I used to swerve. And this clip has helped to articulate to me why that may be a very powerful thing for us to focus on because we really aren't that different from our fellow animals. And you know that we all have that same um, vowel claim to that basic moral right to be respected. Questions about line drawing to one side. It is obvious that the animals used in laboratories raised for food and hunted for pleasure or trapped for profit, for example, are our psychological kin. This is not fantasy. This is fact supported by our best science. The philosophy of animal rights stands for not against justice. We are not to violate the rights of the few so that the many might benefit. Slavery allows this. Child labor allows this. All unjust social institutions allow this, but not the philosophy of animal rights, whose highest principle is that of justice. The philosophy of animal rights stands for peace and against violence. The fundamental demand of this philosophy is to treat humans and other animals with respect. This philosophy, therefore, is a philosophy of peace, but it is a philosophy that extends the demand for peace beyond the boundaries of our species. For there is an undeclared war being waged every day against countless millions of non-human animals. To stand truly for peace is to stand firmly against their ruthless exploitation. And what, aside from the common menu of media distortions, what will be said by the opponents of animal rights? Will the objection be that we are equating animals and humans in every respect when, in fact, humans and animals differ greatly? But clearly we are not saying that humans and other animals are the same in every way that dogs and cats can do calculus, or that pigs and cows enjoy poetry. What we are saying is that, like humans, many other animals have an experiential welfare of their own. In this sense, we and they are the same. In this sense, therefore, despite our many differences, we and they are equal. Will the objection be that we are saying that every human and every animal has the same rights, that chickens should have the right to vote, and pigs are right to ballet lessons. But of course we are not saying this. All we are saying is that these animals and humans share one basic moral right, the right to be treated with respect. So to uh, highlight and showcase uh, Tom Reagan's work uh, in this video, I've chosen a famous clip um, from a show in Ireland called The Late Late Show. And it's a kind of two-parter in a way. And um, what I really want to do is, is um, kind of tune you into the kind of language that Reagan is using here. For example, uh, he gets asked a question that a lot of animal advocates get asked, which is, you know, are you saying that other animals have got the, exactly the same rights as human beings? And he's saying, no, that's not the case. And no animal rights theory says that. And he says, and you can hear this in a second, he said, we don't think that they should have the right to vote or the right to divorce. And he so talks about those sorts of rights. But then his language changes. And then he moves from legal rights to moral rights. And he says that what we do think is that we should recognize their right to be treated with respect. So Reagan is saying that it's not about giving or granting 
other animals' rights. It's about respecting the rights that they already have, as argued and um, in, within the case for animal rights, the kind of rational case for rights within other animals as well as human animals. So look out for that. And then the second part is he talks about how animal use is wrong, even if it might be convenient for us, even if it might bring economic benefit, uh, even if it's customary, and even if it's enjoyable. Those things don't excuse rights violations. So those are the things to look out for in this clip. Do you believe, though, that the reason you shouldn't eat animals is because the animals have the same rights as we have? I don't think they have all the same rights, and, and, and no animal rights person thinks that, Pat. I think that we don't think they should have the right to vote, and we don't think they should have the right to divorce, and we don't think they should have those sorts of rights. What we do think is really very simple. We think that they should have the, we should recognize the, the right to be treated with respect in their case that we, we recognize in your case. And what that means in particular is this. If, if everybody in the audience would benefit by, by uh, exploiting you, uh, I would stand up and defend you and say this is not uh, a justified treatment of you just because others are going to benefit. That's what the right to be treated with respect involves. So similarly, what an animal rights person thinks is that other animals should not be treated in the way we treat them just because we're going to benefit from doing it, because we find it convenient, because we find it economically advantage, uh, advantageous, mm -hmm. because we find it customary, because we find it enjoyable. Those are not okay, sufficiently good reasons to violate somebody's stop rights. Stop coming down. So, um, as Jeremy said, it was actually really hard to choose one clip. Um, I've chosen a clip from the famous speech, The Sword of Justice. Um, and actually, although we're only showing a really short segment of this speech, people really need to go and watch the whole thing to appreciate it in its full glory. Um, I chose this speech because there's a personal connection for me. He made this speech in 1988, declaring war on vivisection. And that's the year I came across my first animal rights store in Sheffield on cage campaigns and started to get involved in campaigns against vivisection. So anti-vivisection was my introduction to animal rights in that very year. But I love this speech for Tom's passion and energy. And despite the fact that he's declaring war on such a vile and evil industry, he does it with great intellect, humor and positivity. And there's a line from the speech that says, it's not bigger cages we want, it's empty cages. And for me, this brilliantly encapsulates the essence of animal rights, because it's an end to all use of other animals we are advocating for. So it's not about finding less cruel or painful ways of performing those experiments. It's about abolishing them altogether and how beneficial those experiments may or may not be to humans is irrelevant. So Tom gives such credence to the movement in this speech. He takes the objections and accusations that are often launched at animal rights advocates, such as being an extremist or being emotional, being ignorant, being misanthropic, being a terrorist, and he blows them out of the water with such eloquence and humor. And he seamlessly highlights the lies and the failings of the industry whilst touching on issues of, of age, class and race, which beautifully demonstrates his stance that animal rights is not separate to human rights. And he even reaches out a white flag to those in the industry to lay down their weapons of torture, to join the army um, for other animals. And this shows real compassion and is an example we can all follow in the movement. And as he says in the speech, hate the sin, not the sinner. And I love how he pays homage to the Animal Liberation Front in this speech as well. And I feel this speech is just still so relevant today. Tens of millions of our fellow animals are being used in laboratories across the world, undergoing experiments that are unimaginably abhorrent and they're hidden from the world and I feel currently a little neglected by our movement, and I'd love to see a resurgence of activism and campaigns against vivisection. It's such a rousing and positive speech. I implore everyone to go and watch it in its entirety. And just a couple of words on um, Tom Reagan and how he's affected me. Instinctively, I feel from being a young kid, I felt it wasn't right to use other animals, that they weren't here for us to use. And Reagan's work has given me the language to be able to understand and express that in a more comprehensive way and extend that into my own advocacy. And I look to the man himself for inspiration. 
I admire his integrity, his intellect, and I think he embodies kindness, warmth, compassion and empathy with a real fire in his belly, a passion and purpose to seek justice for other animals. And I feel really aligned with that. His work is an incredible legacy for this movement and it's a real heavy loss that he's no longer with us. We're gathered here today to declare war on vivisection. And those of us who hold it are said to be extremists. And the unspoken suggestions are that extreme positions cannot be right and that extremists must be wrong. But I am an extremist. When it comes to rape, I'm against it all the time. I am an extremist when it comes to child abuse. I'm against it. discrimination, racial discrimination. I am against it all the time. I am against the abuse of the elderly all the time. The plain fact is, moral truth often is extreme and must be, for when the injustice is absolute, then one must oppose it absolutely and 